I will try to explain the difference between stochastic gradient descent, batch gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent along with the Python implementation by using a very simple example. Let's say we are building a machine learning model for house price prediction. Here you have the training data set which has area, bedroom, price, etc. And you're trying to build this model which is nothing but building a linear equation which can tell you price based on area and bedrooms. And in this linear equation, all you're trying to do is find the values for W1, W2 and bias. My data set has total six examples. During machine learning training, what I would do is I would first go through the first sample and I will initialize W1, W2 and bias to be one here. Then I feed this first sample into this equation find the predicted price, compare it with the actual price and find out an error. The error is here the squared error. Then I feed the second example, second sample, again find the predicted price and compare it with the actual price and find error number two. I do that for all the samples till my last sample which is sample number six. And then I do sum of my error number one to six. By the way, when you are done going through all the samples, it is called end of an epoch. At the end of the epoch, you sum all the errors, then you take the average of it, which is called mean squared error. After that, you adjust the weights using the derivatives. Now, if you don't know about derivatives, learning rate, etc., I have a separate video on derivatives so please go watch that I'm not gonna go in math too much in detail but basically it's a way to adjust your weights so now my new weights looks like 51 9 and my bias is let's say 20,001 I use that in my equation and then I go through all the training samples once again that is the beginning of the second epoch so again, I have predicted price, compare it with the actual price, find error number one, go all the way till the sixth sample, find error number six, and that's the end of the second epoch. I keep on running these epochs until my error gets to a minimum level. At that time, I will have a correct value of W1, W2, and bias. And then I can say my machine learning model is trained. And what we just did is by the way called batch gradient descent. In batch gradient descent, we go through all the training samples before we start adjusting the weight. But what if I have 10 million samples instead of six? To find the cumulative error, I will have to run the epoch and the every epoch will go through 10 million samples it will find 10 million errors then sum them up then it will use derivative to adjust the weight so before even i do my first weight adjustment i would have to go through 10 million samples which means 20 million derivatives because i have two features area and bedrooms and one derivative each will be 20 million derivatives what if i have 200 features it's gonna be crazy computation. By the way, you can use gradient descent for deep learning as well. And often in deep learning, you have multiple layers in a neural network. What if you have to adjust 5,000 weights? 5,000 into 10, 10 million. Figure out the math. It is too much of a computation. My computer will crash or it will take two years to train a model. That's not feasible. So what we can do is maybe instead of going through all the samples, we go through one randomly picked up sample, find out an error. And after first sample itself, you start adjusting the weights. So you find the derivative bias, you adjust the weight. And then in the second iteration, again, you randomly pick one sample and then find out an error. Again, you adjust weights. So you adjust weights after every training sample forward pass. This is called stochastic gradient descent. Look at my cat, she's happy, she's parting. Now she understands the difference between stochastic gradient descent and the gradient descent. 
the key difference between the two is batch grid and decent uses all training samples before it start making adjustment to weight and stochastic grid and decent will use one randomly picked up sample and then it will immediately adjust the weights batch grid and decent is of course good for small training set it is being used for bigger training set as well if you have a more computation power but if you have constraints on that you can use stochastic the convergence or, or the graph between cost and epoch looks something like this so in the case of batch gradient descent it's much smoother versus in stochastic gradient descent it is zigzag line by the way uh, these are the real graphs we are going to do python coding and we will have these graphs i will produce these graphs and i'll show you how they look by the way at the end of this tutorial i have an exercise for you as well so watch till the end we are going to do cool python implementation so my cat was partying and all of a sudden she got another question what the heck is mini gradient mini batch gradient descent so now my cat is not in a party mode she wants to study math now well mini batch is quite similar to sgd in SGD or stochastic, you use one random sample. Instead of one, you can use a batch of it, you know? Because if you have 10 million samples and if you um, find the error in each sample one by one, it might be slow. So maybe, and it not, not only it's slow, but it's uh, it cannot use the vector mathematics of NumPy. See, vector math is one of the big advantages why people use NumPy. You cannot make use of that. So then in 10 million samples, what you can do is you can take a batch of let's say 20 samples each and train your model. Here I'm giving example of maybe 20 training samples. Let's say you have 20 training samples in total. You can pick your batch size to be five, which means you will randomly pick five samples. You will do forward pass and then you will find the error for five samples and then you do weight adjustment. So here is a quick summary of batch stochastic and mini batch gradient descent it's really very simple batch gradient descent you use all training samples before you start adjusting weight sgd use only one training sample and mini batch you use a batch of training samples let's start coding now we are using house pricing data in the city of bangalore you know that in bangalore thousand square foot home with two bedrooms might cost you 40 lakh or 50 lakh based on the area and I have loaded this into my Jupyter notebook and my data frame is ready with that data set now if you look at the columns you will realize that those are not scale the the scale here is much bigger than the scale at the bedroom so first we are going to perform scaling because when you do scaling your machine learning model performs really great all right and just to give you an overview what we are doing right now is we are implementing batch gradient descent and then we will implement stochastic gradient descent in plain python so plain python means of course i'm using sklearn for min max scaling you can use plain python for min max scaling but i don't have time for going into those much details so you know that if you want to do min max scaling in sklearn uh, you can import uh, pre-processing and then for x and y i am using two different objects for min max scalar my x is area and bedrooms my y is y is price all right and if you want to do scaling of your x what you do is this so this will do fit and transform of my data frame when i pr uh, drop my uh, price from my data frame see i'll show you what you get when you do that you basically get area and bedrooms these are the independent variables so i want to use this data frame as my x so that's what this is so i got my scaled x and let's look at scaled x so you see it's basically these two columns but they are scaled actually so when you do min max scaling it will bring them in the range of 0 to 1 all right now let's do the same thing with y 
and here why I am reshaping it uh, so that it looks something like this all right so my x and y both are scaled now so the next step would be to implement the batch gradient descent and remember from the theory that all we're trying to do is find out the weights w1 and w2 and a bias if you look at our uh, equation for the home prices so let me show you the equation real quick the equation is this price is equal to w1 into area w2 into bedrooms for bias so we are trying to figure out w2 and w2 and bias by running gradient descent algorithm so i will define the gradient descent function to be like this which which takes x and y i'm calling y true by the way because i'm going to use y predicted as a variable so just to keep it uh, clear epoch you know epoch is going through all the training example exactly once that's one epoch and learning rate is something we saw in this derivative equation which is this one it kind of controls how fast you want to learn all right now my number of features is basically this okay so when you have x and x dot shape right so my whatever x I, i'm passing my shape will give you rows and columns so this will give you number of features which is actually i have two features okay i have area and i have bedroom so those are two features then what i want to do is i want to initialize w and b to be some random values okay so i will say w is np dot once see in the in the presentation we saw that we were initializing w1 w2 and bias to be one so i am initializing them to be once and the shape will be this for this particular uh, thing so let's see how it looks so if you do this and number of features we know of course it's two so then you get something like this so w1 and this is nothing but w1 and w2 okay very simple all right what is my bias i will initialize bias to be zero by the way you can initialize it to be one doesn't matter and then my total samples all right what is my total samples total samples is x dot shape zero all right zero now i will go through all the epochs one by one so this is my each iteration and every iteration i'm using all training samples to perform my training okay so first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate y predicted so what is my y predicted y predicted is nothing but a weighted sum between all the features and weights so y predicted here for example would be weight into area weight into bedrooms plus bias okay so how do you represent this thing so i want to represent this thing well so that is plus bias as well so let me do plus bias okay so i'm doing plus bias but before that i want this w1 into area and w2 into bedrooms so how do you do that well your area and bedrooms are coming through this x which is a data frame and that will be like two columns and then your weight one and two are coming through this w which is an again a numpy array now if you know about numpy dot product and if you don't know uh, one of my previous deep learning tutorial has a topic on matrices so you should you should uh, the the top the topic is on metrics so you should watch that video because it will give you a clear understanding of matrix multiple uh, manipulation dot product and so on so uh, to 
do this particular computation by the way exactly what you can do is you can do dot product between w and the x transpose now why do i do uh, x transpose so so let's let's figure that out so let's say i have scaled x okay so this is what my x will be and i have uh, weights which is let's say this one okay so when you do a dot product so the way you do dot product is np dot then you do w and you have to do by the way x transpose so when you do dot t it will give you transpose transpose is converting okay what is transpose let me just show you instead of talking you know because i like to show the stuff so this is my original scaled x and watch what happens when i do transpose see my rows got converted to columns so now i had two columns by the way see column one column two and so it's it's transposed if you know from excel you know like converting row to column and column to rows all right so that's very simple and when i do this kind of a dot product what i get is basically exactly this w1 into area plus w2 into bedrooms okay so i'm going to do that here So essentially this represents this particular thing all right and it's a vector operation and this is one of the big benefit of using numpy you can do this computation so fast otherwise you can run a for loop but that will be very very slow now from a partial derivative equation we have to find out this one so what are we going to find out well we are going to find out this one the derivative derivative of error with respect to w1 and with respect to w2 and the equation for that is something like this so you are doing uh, y true minus y predicted and then you are doing a dot product with x transpose and then you are taking a mean and a multiplying with with minus 2 now if you if you want to go in all this math uh, this is a derivative basically so you can accept this equation or you can watch my previous tutorial on gradient descent in python where i have gone through some of these equations so it will be clear and i'm going to link uh, that video in the video description below uh, but this is the math and using that math you all you are doing is you're finding a gradient w gradient and b gradient here and then how do i just wait well you you say w1 is equal to w1 minus learning rate into the gradient all right so i will use the same equation and i will say this okay pretty straightforward my weights are being adjusted and my cost will be what so my cost is a mean squared error so mean squared error if you look at it it is the squared error so first of all you have to sum all your squared errors so how do you do that so you have to square all your errors so when you do this it's again numpy array so when you do that it will give you another array as a result and you can do np dot square on that and that will give you a square of that okay so let's let me just demo really quickly so if you have let's say array this is numpy array by the way like this so my a is b this my b is let's say 10 5 and 7 and when i do a minus b see each it subtracts each individual element and when you do so a minus b is this okay now let's say i do np dot square what do i get square of each of these elements so 9 square is 81 3 square is 9 and 4 square is 16 all right i want to find the mean of it the average so when i do average see this is 81 
and then 9 is 90 then 100 106 so 106 divided by 3 okay so it's it's the correct answer so we are doing exactly same thing here so when you do np dot mean you get the mean squared error and that is your cost all right now I promise you that in the presentation whatever epoch versus cost graph this was a real graph so I want to plot this graph so I need to record the value of cost and epoch at few iterations okay so I would say when I let's say I want to record it every tenth iteration how do you do that so when you do i percentage 10 equal to 0 it will stop here in the if loop at 10th iteration 20th iteration 30th iteration etc at that time I want to record cost and the epoch so for that I will create simple Python list to record cost list and epoch list and then I can say cost list is cost and then epoch list is epoch nope it's i once and that's it i mean I, I run this for loop and then i will get the optimal value of cost weights and bias etc at this point i can just return pretty much everything and once i am done returning I can call the function and I can print those values. So I'm calling this function with scaled x, scaled y, and let's say my epoch is 500. Bias is not defined. Where bias is not defined? Let's see. So bias is not defined. Okay, y predicted plus bias it should be b i'm using b and when you run this you get the value of weight and b and cost to be uh this okay now by the way when you run a linear regression model using sklearn sklearn model internally is doing this exactly same thing it is finding uw1 w2 and bias and this is bias and my cost by the way see my cost is this now let me plot that chart first of all to see how my cost reduces with every epoch so I'm using matplotlib simple plotting so you see my cost was very high and as my epoch uh, value increased the cost gradually started declining at around 100th epoch my value was already low too low and at 500 C uh, you almost see a flat line so I can say that maybe these are the optimum weights that I have and this is w1 this is w2 this is bias again w1 w2 and bias in this particular equation see w1 w2 and bias so using this equation now I can actually write a prediction function it's pretty straightforward right so my prediction function will be let's see what is my prediction function so by the way when I call prediction function I I don't want to pass scaled value so we we train our model using the scale value but when I when I actually call prediction function I want to call something like this this is my square foot this is my uh, number of bedrooms and W and B W and B I already calculated here so I'm just passing that so let's say if I open my this thing see for 2600 square foot home with four bedroom it cost 120 lakh rupees in Bangalore which is 1.2 crore so I want to see some answer in probably that range you know so we need to do something with that scaling all right so first i need to get a scale x from area and bedroom okay so area and bedroom so area and bedroom see my prediction function will take um, i need to transform the area and bedroom to the scale 
so what is that scale so here we use min max scalar and we got xx is my x scale and xsy is my y scale so what I will do is here I will do sx dot transform transform and this expects a data frame or a two dimensional array so let's do that here so, inst so instead of area and bedroom I will pass these values like 2604 and when I do that see it is scaling it in the range of 0 and 1 so that's what I want so this will be the value in scale X now my scale price will be what so price is you know it will be w1 so what is w1 w1 is the C w if I do w here this is w1 this is w2 it is an array so this is w1 into okay into what into my area so my area is this scaled x is my area then w1 into scale x1 and bias so now I get a scaled price okay once you have a scaled price you need to reverse transform because the scale price will be in you know zero and one range you want to reverse transform so you get the actual price and SY was our Y scalar and it has a method called inverse transform so inverse transform the scale price scale price let me show you inverse transform real quick and these scalars expect two dimensional array so I'm just so when the 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 value is 1 it gives you 167 why does it give 167 because the way min max scalar works is it will pick the max value so what is the max value here in this max value is 167 so that will be your 1 and your mean value will be the minimum value here so the minimum value is what 38 okay 38 32 all right 32 value is your minimum so when you supply 0 here it gives you 32 see 32 is 0 and 167 is middle and when you do 0 0.5 you get like intermediate value and that you want to inverse transform so that you get the real price and I can just simply return that value so when I run it okay index one out of bound let's see there is an error this is probably happening because my scale X which was this I need to actually give uh, the zeroth index because it's two dimensional array and I want to get the first dimension so you can see that it predicted the value to be 1 crore 28 lakh rupees and my reality my value was 1 crore 20 lakh rupees so the answer is pretty good actually it's doing a right prediction and since this is also returning two dimensional array I can just do this and this to just get a value so here you see double bracket you're getting two dimensional array and by by doing the index of zero you'll get a single value so now let's do a prediction for 1000 square foot home, two bedroom. Okay, 1000 square foot home, two bedroom. What will be the price? Okay, I see here 38, 38 lakh, here 39. So should be close to 38, 39 in that range. Hmm. So this one is coming to be a little off. Well, it's, it's not perfect after all. So it, it's okay. I mean, you know and then 1500 square foot home uh, three bedroom will be 69 lakh so let's see 1500 three bedroom see 75 so kind of close when you increase the bedroom the price will go a little bit up so 69 to 92 actually it went too much and then when you increase the square foot of course the value goes up 
so see 2003 bedroom is this much and now if we have less square foot from 85 lakh it will go to 69 lakh so this is working pretty good so we are done with the implementation of batch gradient descent now let's look at stochastic gradient descent I just copy pasted some initial part because that part remains same it is exactly same as gradient descent uh, in every epoch iteration what you are going to do now instead of using all the samples we will use a randomly picked sample okay so how do you randomly pick a sample well uh, there is an a random library in Python and when you do randint between let's say 0 and 6 it will get give a random value between 0 and 6 See if you keep on control executing you will get some random value between 0 and 6 so that's what we want to use here and we want to get a random index okay so random index will be basically you are going between 0 and total samples minus 1 that will be the index we are doing minus 1 because index is always the length minus 1 and then what you're doing is you're picking some random sample so you have x and y and from that you are just picking a random sample x and y so this is just one data point that you're getting and your y predicted the equation is actually the same as what we saw before and then uh, that's it actually the remaining stuff remains the same the only stuff that changes is instead of using x and y you're using one sample and once you have one sample x and one sample y you use that in rest of the code and the code is exactly same okay i mean we are not doing things like sum etc because we are dealing with one sample and once you have trained you will of course return and once you return you capture those value in a different type of parameters i will just append sgd after each of these variables and i'm calling this function is stochastic gradient descent function and i got these values now let me compare it with my values in um, So the values are quite same c minus 2.3 and by the way i i use different epoch because in sgd it will take more time you'll you'll have to run more uh, epoch here okay so he, that's what i'm doing here but the thing is in every epoch you are not going through all the samples you are going through only one sample so actually computation wise this can be still lightweight if your data set is huge okay now let me plot the stochastic gradient descent epoch versus cost and this is how you do it this is your x-axis this is your y-axis and this is the chart you see it looks like zigzag it, it starts with some random cost which might be low then it bumps up goes down bumps up it might see a zigzag pattern and eventually it gets little stable and that's a graph we used in this presentation that's why I was saying gradient descent is much smoother versus stochastic is actually little like a zigzag pattern and if you do a prediction using the say I'm using now the stochastic weights and bias and you will notice the the values are quite similar actually so 2604 square foot home would cost you 1 crore 20 lakh rupees here is saying 1 crore 28 so it's, it's doing a, like a good enough approximation and similarly you can try more samples by the way just try to play with it here 1500 square foot 3 bedroom 69 lakh 1500 square 3 bedroom 75 so it's doing pretty good uh, prediction now comes the most interesting part of this entire tutorial friends exercise just by watching this video you are wasting your time if you are not doing exercise you better go watch netflix or you just you know just just go to sleep so exercise is very important unless you practice you're not going to learn coding or machine learning you know forget it 
So you will implement a mini batch gradient descent in Python and that is your today's exercise. I have a solution link here but this link is very cryptic you know if you click on this link without doing solution yourself it will download a coronavirus in your computer and your ram motherboard cpu they will all get fever and they will not recover so you better try on your own first and then you click on this link i have ai embedded into it okay so i'm not kidding mini batch gradient descent all you need to do is you know, here in here we used one sample. Instead of one samples, you just use a, a bunch of samples, basically a batch, and you uh, implement that. Uh, so I highly suggest you do that. Uh, I hope this video was good. Uh, it should have cleared your understanding on all these three topics. By the way, gradient descent, SGD, and mini batch is everywhere in machine learning. Very, very important topics, friends. You have to understand it thoroughly. You cannot skip it. Otherwise, you will not pass your data science or machine learning interview. I guarantee that. So please go through this video, practice the code that I wrote it. I have a link of uh, this notebook in the video description below. Also do the exercise. And important thing is, if you like this video, I'm, I'm putting a lot of effort in making these videos, friends. So please give it a thumbs up, leave a, leave a comment. If you give a thumbs up, it helps in the YouTube ranking. And also share this video with your friends on WhatsApp or LinkedIn or Facebook or try to spread the word. It's a free education that everyone can benefit from. Bye.